proper store is supposed to start at the beginning. Ain't so simple with this one. Now here's a kid whose whole world got all twisted, leaving him stranded on a rock in the sky. He gets up. Sets off for the Bastion, where everyone agreed to go in case of trouble. Ground forms up under his feet as it pointing the way. He don't stop to wonder why. Finds his lifelong friend just lying in the road. Well, it's a touching reunion. He sees what's left of the rippling walls. Years of work undone in an instant in the calamity. That a survivor? No, ma'am. It's a gas fella, forced out from underground. Kid pops him good. Fella got a piece of him, though. Kid just rages for a while. An old repeater falls out of the sky. Ain't a gift from the gods, but it'll have to do. Gotta hold her still to spin up the chamber. Kids worked up quite a thirst by now, so that fountain looks real inviting. Sometimes you just need a drink. A school of squirts tunnels up around him. Must have fled here from the mines. He sets foot inside one of Selandia's famous watering holes. Inside's old Rondi, the bartender. The calamity got him for his drinking did. <laughs> then Kid finds his trusty shield. Security takes him for a petty thief. Special delivery, gas fellas.
windbags start turning up for last call. Bastion out the window. It's a bit of a drop. Ronnie always wanted his ashes scattered here. He gets a good look at things on his way down. He lands on top of a breaker's bow, and it ain't broke. Kid Spy is a good perch for some target practice. He knows he should draw the string all the way back. Right back at you. Good news is the emergency defenses still work. Bad news is they aim it for the kid. Find the distillery, right next to the arsenal. Tough part of town. The arsenal's where the kid can pick the best tools for the job. sip of the spirits in that distillery and the kid'll feel like a new man. Some of them squirts birthing like crazy in a couple of corn bins. Taught the kid good manners. He never used them though. An old 
ferry barge sends the kid on his way. The bastion's real close now. Wasn't long before the kid could loose an arrow, strong and true. a chunk of alloy. The smell of barley and spoiled blueberries fills the air. Scumbags. The kid maybe shouldn't have done what he just did. a scumbag of his last meal. Kid puts him out of his misery. He finds the core to the wharf district. He steals the city's heart. Might as well. Kid has a feeling he better get a move on. The place is starting to fall. See, that core Kid took was the only thing making this particular rock stay afloat. It just keeps running. At last, the skyway is in sight. Whisks him where it needs to go. Now the kid sees something stranger still. His mind races. Did anybody else survive? Sure enough, he finds another. He finds me. We talk for a spell. There's a bit of the Bastion's power in that crest. Enough to point the way to the cores. All I tell him is to set that core is on the monument there, then watch. And just like that, the bastion comes alive. Starts growing again, growing stronger. Kid's gotta put its power to good use. 
Now the Bastion can send them even farther into the wild unknown. Get partners what to build. The Bastion's a place of peace, but we can hold our own if we have to. Much kid can't handle with hammer and bow in hand. Kid don't know what's out there waiting for him. The Skyway. Now the kid can ride the wind to distant lands. Now he lands at the intersection between bad and wrong. Ought to be a core down one of these twisted streets. But which one? He heads for the squirt steps. Won't be no field trip this time. Kid ain't ever seen an elephant squirt before. say even the most rambunctious squirts can be tamed. Squirts don't make the best of friends, but they can be useful at a pinch. No sign of the core here. At least the kid got something for his trouble. Them squirts just don't know when to quit. Heads for the biggest dump in town. Scumbag Alley. Some scumbag still feeding off the city's own trash. And there he is. The oldest scumbag of them all. Gershel. for Gershel's sunny disposition. Keeps telling himself he better watch his step. Shame old Gershel can't float like when he was a young fella. The rest of the path is gone for good. City Crest won't bring it back. No core, no surprise. Like the gas fellas are hiding it from him. He heads for the east side, where windbags used to keep the local forge.
Somehow that old forge is still standing. Inside the forge, Key can fine tune those instruments of his. The little Zolwood oil on that blade shines like a light. Or ain't here neither, so he's got to guess again. Up north is where the gas fella foreman used to live, tending to his flock. Gas fellas all dress alike. Kids wondering the same thing. And there it is. But it's locked down tight in an alloy cage. Blustery old foreman's keeping his fellas in check, almost like he's showboating with the crowd. And now there's a new marshal in town. He hears the whole place groan, but it's too tough to fall. Kid's ready to go and his ticket out's right where he started. He comes back, just like I knew he would. The core hums in his pack, the monuments calling for it. The windbags used to be all right, then the calamity took the floor out from under him. Kid does it again, only fair he decides what we build next. Ain't always much to say. A lot of things need fixing up in this world, and we can start right here. Kids' lifelong friends looking fit to keep on fighting. The repeater and machete, favorite choices of the Ura hunters we once fought. Picked up traces of other cores while the kid was out. Breakers used to come here for target practice. Used to play a little game. See who could bust the most targets in the fewest shots. He's 
focused. He's armed. And he's off. A perfect shot just happens in a flash. It ain't done bad at all. He returns with some of the materials we need. Sometimes a single look says it all. With a good length of Mies gun, that bow's like new again. Every bit as effective as the fancier stuff. Couples used to walk the sundown path. Kid ain't here for pleasure though. Somebody gets to the core before the kid. The floor starts giving way under the lightest step. A single panic squirt could bring the whole place down. Fragments of the old world rain from the sky. Stray valuables are lying everywhere. Well, the path ain't exactly open to visitors no more. Security is all fired up. You see, the path was intended for leisurely strolling and such. Finds a spyglass, like the ones they'd use to search the stars. Air travel always was an iffy proposition. The calamity changed everything, even where the wind blows. Well, if we mastered the winds in the old days, we could do it again. But the question is, who else could have taken the core? Well, ain't no survivor stole the thing. Scumbag ate it by mistake. Tough break. Unlike the kid.
kid, that core ain't coming back. to ship live munitions down the path. Find time to find him. He's wise to toss those things plenty far away. Even gas fellas need some shut-eye from time to time. They get real cranky when you wake them up. In all this toil, Kid keeps coming back to an overwhelming question. Who else could have survived the calamity? So he didn't find the core that time, but that ain't about to stop us. We could always see the stars. We just never could reach them, no matter how high we build. In better days, the melting pot was sealed tighter than the skin on the squirt. Of all the plans to survive the calamity, it had to be stab weeds. Blasted things hurt like a broken heart. He cuts down every stab weed like there's gonna be a prize for it. If there's a core, he figures it ought to be deeper down. Core stuck inside one of those fancy cages. He throws a switch. Now what could possibly go wrong? Quite a bit, as it turns out. The cage starts lifting from the core ever so slow. All Kid can do is wait. Shipments start falling in. Squirt's born bad. Some spring to the kid's defense. Judging by the movement of the cage, it's gonna take a little while. Some of the stuff lying around is downright dangerous. Scumbags don't take kindly to interlopers. Even some 
gas fellas take his corner. Birdie pop that mean old foreman. At this rate, maybe five more minutes, maybe thirty, hard to tell. Squirts get real territorial around the core. Then a ship in a free sample shows up. It ain't all bad, as the kid finds some spices from the motherland, tax-free. One thing's for sure, that cage is awful heavy. I still remember the look on his face after that one. <laughs> Folks voyage crossed the boundless sea to found Ceylandia. It was good living here for a while. The old world's finished, but the new world's just getting started. Makes time to sample spirits from my personal supply. Cinder brick style sure goes down smooth, then stays in your gut like a rock. Turns out those old bones still have some spark in them. Can't be too careful these days. No place better than Trapper Shingle for learning to tread light and shoot straight. Trappers had to tread real carefully, or else take a nasty fall. They train themselves by clearing out the targets while not clearing out the floor. Any good trapper knows never to take a step till the time is right. Scrapes. 
decent trapper wouldn't walk away empty-handed. To think a rickety place like the Shingle survived, when so little else did. That ought to make those fangs sink in nice and deep. Kid decides to keep working his aim and footwork on the shingle. Best time to pick a new spot was when swapping magazines. Expert trappers got something extra to give him an edge. Windbag Ranch was built for gathering squirt extract and copious supply. Ain't nothing more healthful. Some folks showed up to make a fast buck with nothing but a knife. Place gets awful slick sometimes. Still others use the place to test their finest blades. Huh. 
It's all of them down soon enough. Kid comes back from Windbag Ranch, smelling good and ripe. Machetes are so quick, you gotta keep a good grip on them. The dead welcome him with open arms. The calamity took everybody after all. Kid sees it plain, frozen faces all around. You don't much care to see him. Not like this. These folks never saw the calamity coming, but someone did. Someone close. Someone who ain't like Mr. Beckley and his kindly wife. It was someone like him. Kid sees him there agape, in the flesh. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. He ain't about to stop, no matter what. He's got so many questions, after all. The Tundra Brothers didn't make it. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the Bird Boy. The Jawsons, they didn't make it. Grady Sr., Grady Jr., they didn't make it. But him, he survived. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here.
Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now, would we? The core survived as well. Kid does what he has to do. And then, what do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. We have to go. Please. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylandia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind both to him and to each other for the first time. He was born in the Tazel Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city and he's lived here ever since. Zolf offers to help me plot the skyways for the kid. At least the calamity hasn't touched the stars, he says. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. Far to the east. We fought the Ura decades ago, but that was then. Things are different between us now. Give the little tiger a break. Squirt cider will toughen you right up. Too bad about the musty aftertaste. That's why this place is coming together. That's why things are gonna be all right. Well, look what we have here. Kid can pay respect to the old world and earn it in kind. The valediction. Just another one of my sketches. Nothing more. Words can't express what happened, but they're all I got. We tracked down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. The hanging gardens. Folks used to go here to relax from their relaxing. There's only one way in the Cinderbrick Fort. The hard way. Sure, the city marshals may be gone, but now the fort's crawling with windbags. Thank you.
Freeze, or starve, or face the kid. And that's why Cinderbricks got such a bad reputation. The fort's still standing there, waiting for the kid, mocking him. Sure, the city marshals may be gone. But now the fort's crawling with windbags. The calamity was mercy. They've been left to freeze, or starve, or face the kid. Windbags young and old keep fighting for the fort. Good thing the windbags don't know kids fresh out of health times. Kid can't hardly tell up from down after a while. At least the marshals left the kid a parting gift. Something the windbags just can't handle. Something that'll punch clean through them. Windbags ain't much different from normal folks. All they want's a warm place to stay and a decent meal.
The calamity drove the windbags topside. A lot of them wound up here in this very fort. underground like in the old days. supplies, but the kid sure can. So many stairs, somebody's sure to trip. As for the windbags, Cinderbrick gave them enough heat and metal to munch on for a while. Well, the fort ain't theirs by right. Can't blame them for wanting it, though. So many of those sorry things hold up inside that old fort. Not a scratch on him as he presses on the higher ground. and everything in sight with that new fangled musket. Kid stash grenades is there for him if things get even worse. The 
Jared is plain gone haywire. Windbags gummed up the works. Kid ain't afraid of getting burned. They trap the kid in the middle of the Fort Parade grounds. Then they bring out Glutus and Glandon, and all their scumbag uncles. They got something to gain, and only their sorry hides to lose. It takes down Glutus. Maybe it was Glandon. The uncles go out with a whimper. The windbags finally get the message. Kid used to dream of getting a marshal's badge, but not like this. And now ain't nothing left for nobody down at Cinderbrick Fort. Kid shows up just as Zolf's telling me about his own journey to the city. Seems the only thing the calamity saved for Zolf was a smoking pipe. Poor kid collapses after just one drag. The past. Only good thing ever come out of the past is history. Catches up with a kid. Hardly had a moment's rest since all this started.
fair to say he's led a hard life. Supposing what he says in his sleep ain't no lie. He never knew his old man, but he had his mama to take care of. Frail thing with pure white hair like his. his mama's hair to the kid no favors while he was growing up, but he learned to hold his own out there. School ain't working out. So the kid signs up for a turn on the rippling walls. Make his mama some money. Thanks to folks like the kid, the walls kept Ceylonia safe from whatever's out there. The elements, the aura, you name it. Once the kid done his time, he hurried on home. Turns out his mama's time was done too. city had nothing for him. The money he'd been sending home was nowhere to be found, either. So what'd the kid do? Why he went right on back to the walls for another five years? In the history of Ceylandia, nobody has ever volunteered for a second shift on the walls. fend for himself, learn to build, learn to break. In time, the kid 
kid earned good standing with the marshals. They trusted him to scout out farther than anybody. One night, on one of his expeditions, the ground beneath him shuddered, cracked, and split apart. He saw nothing where the world used to be. The calamity happened just like that. All the kid had to work with was his hammer and the clothes on his back. What was I saying? Anyway... Through twisted streets, he ran with nothing but the city crest and an old stranger's voice to guide him. finally arrived at Ceylandia's vaunted safe haven, he and no one else.
But then, all I got was more thankless work from a man who ain't even asked his name. Sure, I may be the one who dreamt up the walls and the bastion, but the kid made him real, not me. Marshals kept the city's peace. They can rest easy now. The Gravers, they are Majestus. They seemed unstoppable. The Marshals seemed like good men, he says. They treated him with dignity. Zolf brought his antique smoking pipe all the way from the terminals. Even since the Ura surrendered to us, the Marshals kept a wary eye on him. Party punch is so zesty. It'll let you carry on through the worst of times. Kid ain't finished here yet. Zolf's travels ain't much compared to what the kids had to go through for all this. The lost and found. Here kid takes fragments of the old world and makes them whole again. Takes us some fragments, and the bastion makes it good as new. You want to tune a scrap musket, you start with the barrel. Points just don't get any sharper than that.
Ever felt a soul wood gourd like picking up broken glass barehanded? As old wood grove, marshals learn to make every shot count. The trick was to pop all those nasty gourds without wasting ammo. Most marshals didn't get far on their first few tries. Had to catch a bunch of those gourds in a single shot. Funny thing about muskets is they work best up close. The best of the best clear the course in just a few shots. Kid probably could have made himself marshal one day. What else is there to say? The marshals learned to pack those shells full of fire. The accused always got a fair shake in Ceylandia. Some used to take the bullhead trial. Survive the trial without taking a scratch, you'd walk away a free man. The Bullhead trial taught folks three things. First, a good defense is a good offense. Second, you gotta always watch your back. Third, ain't no godlike bull up there gonna save you. Smarter ones knew when to just step aside and let things go.
Some folks wound up taking the coward's way out. The kid pulls through in fine form. Well, a kid always wanted to compete in the bullhead trial. No use praying to the gods these days. No time for it either. Kid says a little prayer anyway. Couldn't hurt, right? Pith Orchard. Place is a dead end in more ways than one. Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Pith, the bull. Well, the gods are long gone now, and the orchard core is long gone too. Seems Pith ain't much of a watchdog. Pith stood for something once. Something real. In time, though, the bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. Fifth makes a decent scarecrow, at least. Then Fifth lights up like a rodeo. Ain't easy punching through his hide. Kid breaks him to bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. So what'll it be? Invoke the gods? Or tell him off? Kid decides to press his luck. Well, if the gods are alive, they must be plenty sore. Kid ain't never seen windbags that quick. Maybe old Pith would have scared him.
kid passes Pence's trial, and he's richer for it. The gods don't care about trinkets, for the kid ain't no god. Kid ain't found a core, but least he found Zolf's precious shrine. Now we can build a shrine of our own, though I got some alternatives in mind. Zolf doesn't touch the thing. Says the god of commotion is no children's toy. Turn him round and round all you like. Pith's still gonna be ugly. Leura feared the gods. We turned them into toys, put their faces on our walls. <laughs> to master the musket, you gotta get rid of the recoil. The Langston River flowed free and wild till the Calamity drank it all up. Maybe all that water just grew wings and flew off. Riverbanks swarming with windbags. They're so bent on finding the core, they hardly notice the kid. Lucky for him, a certain famous fairy barge is still afloat. She 
send some squirts crying home as she leaves port. Maybe Nelly knows the way to the core. Maybe she can slip right past all the clamor on the coast. Or maybe not. The security skiff pulls up port side. Nelly's just another windbag to those guns. Just then, the windbags notice who she's sailing with. They're pretty steamed about what happened at Cinderbrick. They try to cut her off. They try to slow her down. They try to knock her out. Well, Weepin' Nelly tries harder. Try as she might, though, she hits a snag. Kids gotta help her get untangled. Favors for favors. She picked a good spot for a break, cause the core is right there. Then the kid hears an unusual sound like a hundred flapping wings. Peckers. They've been watching his every move. They had their own eyes on the core, but why? Well, kid ain't got time to think it over just yet. He finds Weepin' Nelly rearing the go. Turns out she's got a special surprise for when the waters get rough. She's gonna need a little help with all them peckers. Crafty things think they're king of the roost now. The rest of us only wish we could fly in times like these. Security skiffs keep on coming to the starboard side. Don't seem to care what they shoot, as long as they hit something. Just gotta make one last stop. With her last breath, Ellie gets the kid to solid ground. Solid ground in Pecker Country. They want that core real bad. Seems a calamity ain't hurt the Pecker's appetites. The kid shoes him off, knowing they'll be back. Know how many times kid nearly fell off the bars back there? A good couple of times. Now, 
listen close. You should remember this next part. Why go to Prosper Bluff? Used to take an enterprising man or a plain old fool to venture out that far. The city was the most beautiful place in the world. We all knew that. But on the other hand, some folks just yearn to see the things they're told they can't. And that's why you go to Prosper Bluff, ain't it? Yeah, the kid hears something he ain't heard in a long while. How's it go again? Yeah, that's the one.
Well, no point explaining what happens next, right? Suffice it to say, kid ain't coming home empty-handed. And besides, it's like the song goes. They'll be here before too long. We darn near celebrated when the kid got back, didn't we? Zolf never thought he'd see a fellow her again. We become fast friends. Calamity has that effect on people. But there was more to be done. There was one last core to find. Kid surprised when I tell him there's only one core left. I shouldn't have believed it either. Behold, the Pantheon. A Kobe. If only I'd known half the secrets of the Calamity were tucked away in that book. I'd have worked to translate it right away. A scientific journal written in Zolf's native tongue. He learned so much from it. Too much. Most of the Ura never got a taste of Ceylandia's fine goods, unless they were born and raised in the city like Zia here. Sure, the world's all gone to pieces farther than the eye can see, but leave it to this gal to point out the amazing view. Girl tried to run away from home one time, but the marshals stopped that, didn't they? So many secrets in there and she can't even read it. Her father's own journal. The Menders. They had thankless jobs. The most important kind. Kid takes another drag. Goes out like a light. There's something you should know about the kid, but let me take it from the top. up with a kid. Hardly had a moment's rest since all this started. Fair to say he's led a hard life. Supposing what he says in his sleep ain't no lie. Never knew his old man, but he had his mama to take care of. Frail thing with pure white hair like his. <laughs> Having his mama's hair did the kid no favors while he was growing up. But he learned to hold his own out there. School ain't working out, so the kid signs up for a turn on the rippling walls. Make his mama some money.
Thanks to folks like the kid, the walls kept Ceylon the